Hi. All right, all right, I'll talk about this Hyperloop thing. Uh, but so many people sent me this. This 13-year-old scientist may have designed a better version of Hyperloop. <laughs> from none other than the trusted journalistic source of CNN Travel. So I, uh, yeah, okay. I I have held off doing a Hyperloop video, and this is not a debunking, this is why it's on the uh, second channel. I just, I just couldn't be bothered, and of course Thunderfoot has done many Hyperloop videos just busting the, uh, you know, the science and engineering behind this, and I could, but I, I just, no, I'm not going to put the energy into <laughs> and the brain cells into debugging Hyperloop. It is a ridiculous concept that will never happen. The well, I will clarify that the uh, low pressure, the low pressure Hyperloop will never happen. And if it's not a low pressure, or some say vacuum, but you know, low pressure, we won't argue about that. Low pressure. Hyperloop, where they reduce the pressure in a steel tube and you whiz through at, you know, what was 600,000 kilometers an hour or something like that. It's, it, and it's not a new concept, of course. Elon Musk didn't invent it. It's, you know, over 100 years old or whatever. And it's just a, a fundamentally retarded idea from so many aspects. Any in, engineer with half a brain can tell you why a low pressure Hyperloop is not going to work yet. I, you know, people are pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into this thing. Elon Musk isn't actually putting much of his own money into this. They're sponsoring some student contests and stuff like that. But, you know, Richard Branson, Virgin and all, you know, a bunch of other people have been sucked into the hype of Hyperloop and are just putting money into it. Anyway, this article is a clear demonstration of the sad state of journalism these days. I mean, you know, this 13-year-old scientist, because she's a scientist, okay, <laughs> designed a better version of the Hyperloop. And it's from Francesca Street, who has written about Hyperloop before. Um, new full-scale Hyperloop passenger capsule. They all raved about this, and it's just an empty fiberglass pod or whatever. Like, give me a break. And of course, like, this is an award-winning journalist. Award-winning. Look at this. Uh, one awarded a uh, 30 under 30 journalist gold award travel media award finalist in the business travel journalism award so yeah this is the kind of people you got writing these articles anyway let's have a look several rival companies may be hard at work trying to get elon musk hyperloop concept off the ground <laughs> suckers but hurtling across country maybe even across continents at 600 miles per hour in a low pressure steel tube feels uh, still feels far from reality. I haven't clicked on that yet. Let's have a look. How long until Hyperloop is here? Another set. Oh, from Francesca again. Okay, I might have already had this one in here. India enters the fray. India Hyperloop. And, and there's many. Like, if you actually go search CNN Hyperloop, uh, like how many pages of money CNN editorial. Yeah, there's like, it could be a reality in 2013. Oh, Jesus, is it that long ago? Wow. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. 13, science, slash dot. It's made slash dot. Here we go. Slash dot's still a thing? Is it still around? Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. Um, oh, no, they're just sharing the CNN article, are they? Yeah, all right. Anyway, let's see what this 13-year-old uh, uh, has come up with. By the way, fully support this. Uh, fantastic. You know, here she is down here. You know, great job, but um, yeah, she won, well, she came second in this 3M Young Scientist Challenge, and you've got to support young people like this, you know, getting these ideas and doing this, but you could argue, okay, she probably shouldn't have won second place. With a look, her presentation looks quite impressive, look at this, okay, you know, she's put a lot of work into that, so, you know, beauty, so, it's, but when like mainstream publications, even if it's CNN quality, um, they pick up on that. They keep publishing this crap, and which is why people keep funneling money into this, and it's going to be money down the drain, guaranteed. Mark my words. The uh, <laughs> vacuum low-pressure Hyperloop will not happen. And if it's not low-pressure, it'll just be a maglev train. And I've actually been on the maglev, I've been on the Shanghai Maglev. 
uh, which travels at 430 kilometers an hour. I've got a photo somewhere of the, of the sign inside going 430 kilometers an hour, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant. It does actually work. It's a power hog, but um, unfortunately, I think the Shanghai one is not making any money because it went from the airport um, to just a nothing destination that nobody wanted to go to. So it's like, it's kind of like turned into a white elephant sort of thing. Last I heard anyway, yeah, it wasn't making any money, but it's a fantastic te technology. And when they've got two tracks and when both of them pass like this at 430 Ks an hour, you know, you're sticking your head not out the window. Can't do that, you know, good old days, you stick your head outside of the red rattlers and <laughs> almost get it knocked off. But anyway, when they pass each other, wow, it's, it, it is remarkable. So yeah, 430 Ks an hour. Uh, maglev is a fantastic technology, so it can definitely work. But when you've got to put a maglev inside a steel tube, anyway, steel. Let's let's look at this. Crouchley's idea, uh, yeah, she just won, invented a more economically viable and eco-friendly. How's it more eco-friendly? I'm not sure how it's more eco-friendly. It's still got to have a maglev. To, anyway, we'll go into it. Crouchley's idea, which just won second place, is to build pneumatic tubes. Pneumatic tubes next to existing train tracks. Okay, so it, it doesn't sound like it's a... Ma no, magnetic shuttles. So it's not... Is it maglev or is it pneumatic? Anyway, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. The whole idea is to have existing train lines, okay? So to put a, a steel tube next to a train line is actually, it, it, you know, it's fundamentally not that bad an idea on the surface. But then, you know, batterizers not a bad idea on the surface and all sorts of other uh, things I've debunked are not a bad idea on the surface, right? And <laughs> some devil's in the engineering detail of these things. And apparently, so yeah, it's a big like slug in there, I guess, a big magnet thing. And then, yeah, it's it's hooked onto an existing train so you can utilize your existing train lines. And that's great. You know, you don't have to build that much more infrastructure, I guess. But you still got your couple hundred kilometer long vacuum tube, you know. But anyway, so you don't have to get the problem of, A, having humans inside the low pressure vacuum tube, which can implode and whatnot. And it's just you know so that's what uh, she's trying to overcome which is fair enough she's recognized that the idea of having humans inside these low pressure uh hugely long vacuum tubes is probably not a good idea it's kind of darwin level um idea so good honor for uh thinking that yeah that's a bad idea how can i solve that magnetic shuttles would travel through these vacuum tubes connected via magnetic arm to trains traveling on the existing tracks okay the problem here is that, okay, you've got your low pressure vacuum in there, so it reduces the air pressure inside there, so your, so your slug or whatever it is can go faster inside there, whether it's pushed by pneumatics, and but they're, they're terrible, or maglev, of course, and then it's not more environmentally friendly. Okay, so that's fine, but your train still, your air, okay, you've got a wedge on the front, make it aerodynamic, um, but yeah, and it's, it shows a skid. That's interesting, instead of wheels. Um, anyway, existing uh, tracks push along, you still got the air resistance of the train. So it's like, it, uh, 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 just, it, it, great idea for a 13 year old, absolutely fantastic. But for a mainstream publication to pick up on this and run with it, like, uh, unbelievable. That's a sad state of journalism these days. This system would utilize current train tracks there by cutting infrastructure costs. Uh, Crouchley says eradicating the potential safety risk posed by propelling passengers in a vacuum. Yeah. It's a bad idea. <laughs> There'd be no need for trains to use diesel or electric motors. Okay, so it's not maglev, because otherwise you've still got electric, you know, propulsion. Um, a very power hungry electric propulsion, by the way, making the trains lighter and more fuel efficient. Um, yeah, no. No, it's just no. Um, this is important to Crouchley Lions to devise active solutions to the climate crisis. Okay, great. Terrific. Fully support it. I pinpointed transportation as something I wanted to work on because if we can make trains more efficient, then we can eliminate the amount of cars, trucks, and buses on the road, Crouchley tells CNN. Well, trains are already very efficient. They're very efficient modes of transport because the, the friction of the wheels on the track is, you know, once you've got them up to speed, they're really quite efficient uh, transportation devices. And uh, maglev, I don't know, you know, you'd, you'd have to run through the numbers of uh, uh, the maglev system you know but it, anyway it is 
you know, it, it, it works. Um, yeah, they levitate on magnetic electromagnets, um, basically, and it, but it's hugely power hungry, but it works. And you can get these up to 450 kilometers an hour, working, installed, functional, transporting people. I've been on it. And, and the difference between Hyperloop going 1,000 kilometers an hour and this going 450 um, is like 430 is like not as huge as it seems. And you're not gonna get, you've got stations along the way, you've got to speed up, slow down, all that sort of jazz. It's just, anyway. The science teacher encouraged her to enter the Young Scientist Challenge. Yep, um, fantastic. As I said, like she looks like she's gone to a lot of work on the poster and the concept and everything here, so good honor. So maybe she won just uh, through sheer effort, but the idea, you know, shouldn't have cut the mustard. After I got my inspiration, I did a lot of research on my design Hyperloop and I put a design on paper and used Autodesk Inventor. Cool, so <laughs> that's where you get the uh, model up above. Maglev Crouchley noted is a very efficient but expensive train design. Um, it, it is actually relatively efficient compared to um, other high-speed rails. I was able to find this data here, which is uh, specific. Here we go, specific em energy consumption in uh, watt hours per seat kilometer, which is a great metric, and ICE and TransRapid is the uh, Shanghai Mag Maglev. I think it's the only operating maglev in the world is it i don't know there might be one other but anyway that's the trans rapid is the company that runs that i believe so yeah it's actually it's lower amount of watt hours per seat kilometer and the ice is the uh of course the japanese high speed uh, rail thing i know i assume that's you know fairly representative of electric uh, high speed rail so yeah it looks like um the efficiency in amount of energy consumption but uh as i showed before if you go to the shanghai uh wiki page it actually this is like old data but it tells you that uh, 64 percent of the operating costs are the energy consumption on there but hey, it it's actually seems to be more efficient. So there you go. So that's, yeah, that seems to be true. Excellent. Let, let's go maglev. I love maglev. It's great. And of course, uh, because it's it's floating above, there's no uh, rolling wheel noise and, and stuff like that. But that brings us to the point, like, okay, you know, maglev, fantastic. Have maglev. Why put it inside and evacuate it? Just to, to get your maglev. Just convert your train into a maglev train and uh, figure out your power source requirements. And it, it just works. It's simple. And yeah, you can go, sure, you can't go a thousand kilometers an hour, but you can go half that. Um, I think a maglev in China is, I don't know if it's operational, but it's, it's done over 500 kilometers an hour. And uh, like, there's just none of the issues at all that are involved in Hyperloop. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just a complete no-brainer. You know, uh, trying to eke out, maybe, if you're lucky, you might be able to get your 1,000 kilometers an hour in your Hyperloop if you can get the damn thing reliable and working, which is not going to happen. Um, <laughs> there's so many issues involved. But even if you could, double the speed is it's not as great as it sounds because you've got to have all these stations unless you've got, like, purely a, like a city-to-city -city link with no stations in between or whatever. And then, But then you've got to have the tube, like, hundreds of kilometers long. And it, uh, <laughs> oh, low pressure vacuum -y type tube, a couple hundred millis. Yeah, nothing's going to go wrong. Unbelievable that anyone can think that this is a good, uh, it's such a retarded idea. Just stop it. Stop it. Uh, meanwhile, she concluded that more traditional forms of Hyperloop have their flaws. Good honor. For, like, even she can see that this is, <laughs> like, Hyperloop, the low pressure Hyperloop is a dumb idea. But it's, you know, there's, dozens of very deep in deep technical engineering reasons and a lot of people will say all the crit all the critics will say but yeah they laughed at the right brothers oh you know goodness and some people say oh if you just throw money at it you can solve the engineering problems no it's <laughs> some ideas are just funda fundamentally retarded ideas and there's nothing you can do about it just throw them out hyperlink is very high risk um it's a hundred percent risk and everyone's going to lose their money on it guaranteed uh, my design can be less expensive and more efficient than the current train technologies but you know once again it's a 13 year old you know there's no detail in this i'm doing this because of the fact that cnn are reporting on this unbelievable i know it's cnn you know and like eye rolls like 
My design can rely on 100% renewable energy. Well, so could Hyperloop. And the winner was a 14-year-old California who invented a first aid liquid bandage designed to reduce the risk of superbugs. See, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Crouchley says, participating in the competition was a lot of fun. Along the way, she worked with a mentor, presented her invention to a panel of scientists and worked together with un in other innovative young scientists. See, here's the thing. Like, yeah, you want to encourage these kids, but you don't want to give fundamentally retarded ideas you know, pride of place on the winner's podium. I, like, argue this in the comments, please. Am I wrong about this? Should, you know, obviously, you know, she might have put a lot more. I don't know what that contraption is behind her. Is that a, oh, she could have a working model. She's, like, shows a bit of it up here. Maybe she's actually hooked up a, uh, some sort of vacuum pump or something or uh, some sort of pneumatic uh, thing and she makes it go, she pushes it along and maybe, uh, you know, the model does work and that's, that's fantastic. So maybe she won because of that. So I don't necessarily want to take it away, but please leave it in the comments down below. Any scientist slash engineer should know the Hyperloop is just a fundamentally ridiculous concept. And anyway, as for the, um, it, like steel tube, still wants to use a steel tube, it says. Steel is like ferromagnetic. It like it's just going to stick to the steel tube. Like it, it's just not going to work. So you'd have to build the tube out of something else. Um, what? <laughs> um, Polly put the kettle on material here. <laughs> We're going to build it out of that. And it's it, it just no, 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 no. She should have won a maybe. She should have won a prize for her effort, perhaps. But I, it's just no to report on this. Building a bigger model to work out how the concept will work on a larger scale. I, you know, have fun. Excellent. But no, just don't report on this. That's, that's my problem, is the fact that they've reported on this. And they give this to like a travel reporter to report on. Do they, does CNN even uh, like employ a scientist slash engineer reporter, engineering reporter, science reporter? But they're going to report on it anyway because it's 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 all the hype. So they have to report on it because everyone else is reporting on it, and it's it's just a vicious circle jerk of of journalism. The hyperloop it's coming to China because China oh China they'll just throw their money in engineering and lack of red tape at and they'll just do it. You know everyone knows China can do everything. It's just no. <laughs> It's dumb. Oh, look at this. Look at these futuristic wanky concepts. Oh, oh. And this is the reality is that when we've got a steel tube. <laughs> and I, of course, I won't even bother playing all the demos like the ones they've built, the student contest ones, and they get up to like eight. I think they've actually gotten up to 300 kilometers an hour or something like that. But whoop de doo it goes, you know, 50, 100 meters down the tunnel and then just dies. If you want to do maglev, it's, it, it's already here. Just do maglev. Don't, there's no need to put it in a ridiculous low pressure tube, which is the whole concept of Hyperloop. It's just, oh. There's so many issues with it. I'm not engineering issues with it. You wouldn't even bother solving. You know, any engineer with half a brain, as I said, can see that, except for the ones that are biased and being paid to work on this. It's probably a good job. You know, a lot of, you know, some very smart people were paid to work on U Beam, for example. Fundamentally retarded concept. Um, and, like, you can't necessarily blame them for working on it, um, especially the students. You know, great. Okay, you know, students want to work on this sort of thing. It's like, it's good experience and stuff, but people are putting hundreds of millions of dollars into this sort of stuff. And it's just, it's just ridiculous. And, and maglev works. It's great. You build a mag maglev and put it between two, you know, major cities or something like that. And, you know, in good destinations, unlike Shanghai, they put it in the end one was in some, I had to get a cab for 30 minutes to the place to just hop on the maglev because I wanted to hop on the maglev. I don't think there was anything there. I can't remember. It's some district. Maybe it's maybe it's different, but I heard that's why it failed. Big solar farms for it, big battery solutions, big other, you know, renewable energy solutions for it, whatever, right? And you can probably make, and maglev works. It's a proven solution. It's already out there. It's carrying people. And you don't need to put in a low pressure tube. Just stop all this hyperloop and it's been going for so long and there's a huge i've been talking out about it for years over on the ev blog forum there's a huge thread or multiple threads about it and it's just it's a fundamentally retarded idea just just stop it and uh, these these journalists uh, these hack journalists just who know nothing about engineering or science just can't help themselves get someone who knows not 
some travel reporter who knows nothing about science and engineering. I mean, give me a break. Your thoughts on Hyperloop down below, because I, <laughs> I just, I'm not going to waste my brain cells um, actually doing a full engineering debunking video. It, it, could, it could be hours long, many hours long, and it'd take me weeks to get, like, go through all the reasons why. It's just, it's just not going to work. It is not going to work. Every single person putting their money into Hyperloop is going to lose it unless they pivot to some form of like get ditch the low pressure tube and oh it just becomes you know Elon Musk underground uh, car thing which is ridiculous in its own right that even made the oh god I, I'm not even going to pull up the article it made it made the newspapers here because some um, senator or councillor or somebody uh, actually proposed when Elon Musk did the tunnels, you know, the, 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 you know, under LA and all that sort of jazz. Oh, we can put a tunnel through the Blue Mountains here and we can, you know, don't have to go over the mountains, just go right through it. We can build one of these like tiny little one car tunnels and that's the reason it costs one tenth of the other uh, of the real tunnels um, is because it's so tiny. It's like, oh uh, God. Hasn't invented any new technology to make tunnel tun tun tunnels 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 cheaper. <sighs> just I I need to stop. I I'm just going to get carried away. Let us know your thoughts on Hyperloop down below. <laughs> it's not going to happen unless they pivot to something. I just oh. catch you next time.